Yo, yo, what is up, my fellow Earthlings? It's your favorite fellow Earthling, Austin Hustler Hires. At least I hope you, I'm your favorite Earthling anyway, favorite fellow Earthling. So I wanted to uh, just get on and make this short video for you today, guys. I hope everybody's having a great day out there. And uh, I know I am. I've been having a great week and we've been really, really busy. So I know I've been slacking on my YouTube channels just a little bit, uh, but I wanted to get on here and just kind of talk to y'all about what's been going on and, uh, and, and just like say a little bit something about what I think is, is happening in the junk removal industry. And I've been noticing it in my area and, and other people's area. Uh, you know, in y'all's area, where, wherever there is junk, this has been happening, which is kind of crazy. So, you have you you have junk removal as an industry, and you know it started somewhere with 1-800 got junk and college honks hauling junk, and, um, and then there were some other big companies that came out there, and there were some small companies every once in a while and uh, it wasn't a huge known industry. It wasn't a, uh, a big thing that people wanted to get into and people that were just regular, you know, clients of junk removal, of the junk removal industry, uh, were still telling people about junk removal today. To this day, I'm having people ask me, what is junk removal, what do you do? And um, that is still crazy to me. So that being said, uh, with that one little thing being said that, you know, the customer still sometimes don't know what junk removal is. So yeah, a lot of people think that they just have to, you know, do it themselves or, or, or just put it out by the road. They don't know there's this option of junk removal. But I'll tell you what, it is becoming a very popular industry for people to start a business in. I have had, and this is no joke, I have had three different companies, three different companies in the last year, maybe two years, uh, start up. And one just started literally, <laughs> and these are all within, you know, a mile of me in a very small town where there's, we're not like Orlando, Florida or, or like any place in California or New York where it's just packed everywhere, there's people everywhere. Uh, this is a very small town and it took a lot, a lot of work to grow in a small town like this. To be as big as I am in a small town like this, that is very rare to find. Usually if you start your junk removal business in a small town, you tend to fail. You're a fly-by-night junk removal company and, uh, and you get started up, you just don't get enough business and then you end up going to get a job. Uh, you know, a full-time job or a part-time job to make that extra money because the, the junk removal business is not carrying you through. Um, I was I was lucky and I was blessed and uh, and I had the brain power to push through the hard times in this small little town to grow. Now, um, back to what I was saying, there there have been three different companies in my little town that started up, and one just started about last month, I would say. Uh, he's my neighbor like three houses down started a junk removal company He came to one of our garage sales, right? And he said hey, you know uh, I, I do scrap metal removal and in any like regular junk removal like furniture or garbage or trash I'll refer you guys to come out and do this well one day he referred us and uh, the problem with that is he refers us to people that are hiring him for free to come pick up scrap metal so when he's referring us, we're a, a pretty big junk removal company where, you know, we're still small compared to the big guys, but we're a good size. You know, I have three employees uh, plus me and my wife. That's five people working here. We have jobs every day. We have to charge a certain amount to be able to profit on these jobs. And so when he's recommending a customer to us that's hiring him for free, they're expecting us to either be free, which is the same as him, or really cheap. And so I went out and I did this estimate for the referral he gave us, and we never heard back from them. We were too expensive for them, and I knew it. I knew it right off the bat. They were looking for a freebie, and we don't do that. Um, so that's what's happening, and, and I guess he saw that we were expensive, 
and he has a little like Nissan tiny little pickup truck and he had a little tiny little trailer and built some wooden walls on it and and I'm happy for him you know he, he got it started up but he's right down the road and what he's not thinking about is we're gonna without even trying us being established here already we're gonna completely crush him he's not gonna be able to get the business that we're getting he's not gonna be able to grow at all he's literally gonna be a fly-by-night junk removal company until he gets tired of doing all the work himself and um, and charging these low prices not making any profit and then he's just gonna fall off the map like two other companies around here in the last year year and a half started up a company and they just fell off the map so uh, yeah, I just want to kind of get on here and tell you guys, you know, what's going on. It, the junk removal industry is really getting saturated, and I don't know if it's us as a YouTuber uh, family. I don't know if it's uh, you know the YouTubers like me and Sonoma Strong, uh, Tim Doss. Um, we got we got uh, um, there's there's plenty. I can't think right now. I've been working all day. There are plenty of other junk removal channels out there right now and we're teaching everyone how to do this but the one thing we need to teach more of is how how the junk removal industry is really getting saturated with people charging low low prices and eventually that's gonna hurt the people that are starting to get into the business like you guys if you're looking to get into this business it's not gonna hurt me I'm already established it's not gonna hurt the people that are already established but if you're trying to jump in and just hop in right now, it's gonna hurt you because there are several other people hopping in as well and the cheap customers are gonna be hiring you guys, no offense, but that's what happens when you first start out. You have these cheap customers, the people try to dog you down um, and, and work you down on the price. And uh, yeah, you wanna charge you know, a, um, a lower price in the very beginning, but you don't wanna charge so low that that you're gonna you're never gonna be able to raise your prices I don't know how to say that you want to start what you're worth right off the bat you want to start with prices of what you're worth you don't want to just sell the job for a negative profit just to sell the job hoping that that one person refers you if you're charging an okay price maybe just right under what all the other junk removal companies are charging that's probably the smartest idea just under them compete with your your bigger companies around and show them that you are a good um, a, a good company to come to an efficient company you know respectful company and you go above and beyond for the customer so as we get more and more saturated in this business as more and more people find out about this business we need to be cautious about that and, um, and and make sure you're starting your business uh, like a like a top-end uh, junk removal company because if you just started out like a regular fly-by-night person and you're just lowballing everything so you can get the jobs you're gonna ruin it for yourself and you're gonna ruin it for all the other people that are trying to get started like I said the people that are already established we're gonna be okay we have return customers and and we're gonna continue to get new customers because we can pay for Google Ads or you know we have realtors we have contractors we have apartment complexes and hotels that we work for and give us money year-round so we're gonna be alright um, and, and that's something I just wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about and maybe this video helps you understand that uh, it's not it's not as easy as all of us on YouTube me being one of those people uh, make it look like it's not as easy as I make it look it's not as easy as all the other guys make it look there is a difficult level to starting any business and just because you can get out there my hair is a mess right now just because you can get out there buy a truck and a trailer and just get going in your junk removal business does not make it an easy business um, there are several struggles you're gonna have and you're gonna have to fight those other people trying to jump in right now You're gonna have to get ahead of the curb and you're gonna have to become established More quickly than I had to or anybody that started two or three years ago um, You know I started about five years ago now with the junk removal company just getting into it and I've had five years to establish my company before this saturation happened 
And a lot of it's happening, I believe, because of the coronavirus and people losing jobs and people wanting to be financially free and own their own business and be their own boss. And that's all good and dandy. I just wanted to put this video up, guys, to give you a little forewarning about what's happening in the junk removal industry. They're popping up left and right. And uh, like I said, I had one right across the street last year start up and, and, and we completely crushed them. No offense to you if you're watching this, but I know that our business kept coming in and yours did not. Uh, and and the same thing is gonna happen with the guy that started it right down the road It's it's not gonna go very well for him starting a company right down the road from me Even though there's plenty of garbage to be removed. I'm the number one recommended uh, Company in our area on Facebook if you go on Facebook in our area if anybody mentions anything about a dumpster or trash or garbage curbside pickup we get recommended by five, six, seven different people that we don't even know. Uh, maybe they were customers, maybe they're friends or family of customers, and we get recommended by them. And, and then you have these other smaller companies recommending themselves. Who do you think that person is gonna go to more often than not? They're gonna go to the person that has been recommended several times by different people, not the companies that are recommending themselves. Um, even though you may get a job or two that way because you'll be able to undercut but like I said by undercutting you're not gonna go anywhere you're not gonna make much profits you're not gonna grow very fast you're not gonna uh, get established very fast so keep that in mind guys I hope you guys learned something from this video I'm glad I got on I was able to have a few minutes today to get on here and talk about that um, I'm gonna be working on my rage room non-stop until April 15th which we plan on opening up if you're in Florida Central Florida at all come and visit us I'll be posting um, on Facebook and Instagram the address for our grand opening we plan on having a bounce house and maybe even a food truck out there and then people that come that same day to rage out will be having uh, discounts on the uh, raging experience that day and um, you may even get your uh, annual pass for free that day. I haven't decided yet. I hope everybody's having a great day out there. Like I said, I love you all. And I'm uh, sorry I haven't been putting up videos uh, too often. And hopefully this video kind of helps you understand the saturation in the market uh, recently. It's been very, very saturated. A lot of people have been coming on board. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and take care of my website for fellow Earthlings Rage Room. We'll talk to you guys next time.